On this week's Swipe, we're looking to the skies. Coming up. The apps and devices that'll turn you into a star spotter in no time. We spend the night with a group of amateur astronomers to find out how they do it. Scientists at NASA develop climbing space robots inspired by geckos. Whatever happens. And we've got even more space exploration in our games review. Welcome to Swipe. This week, we're out with a group of stargazers because closely monitoring the night sky has always relied on technology. And tonight, we're going to find out how these guys do it. But while we're waiting for it to get dark enough, here's Angela with the apps and hardware, making it easy for anyone to experience the beauty of everything up there. If you want to wish upon a star, first you need to track it down. And there's plenty of apps helping you do just that. Space enthusiast Duncan Gear has been telling us how some of his favourites work. The Scope Nights app lets you track light pollution and weather conditions to find the very best place to observe the skies. There's nothing worse than going out in the middle of the night to find out that it's cloudy and you can't see anything. There are apps like Polar Align, specifically designed to help you align your telescope and point it at an object, a crucial part of stargazing. Filming and taking pictures in low light often come out a little dark and grainy. Well, there's apps to help you with that too. This one lets you tweak your smartphone's camera so it can capture long exposure photos of the night sky by itself. And there are also services that monitor the northern light and alert you when it's visible from the UK. As well as applications, the equipment is getting more advanced too, making it easier to find those constellations. A lot of telescopes now are coming with Wi-Fi, so they can connect to people's phones. Um, you can download apps that will connect directly to the telescope, and you can look at the app, and you can choose where you want to look at in the sky, and the telescope will go directly to that place. The benefits of that is before, it was very hard for amateur astronomers maybe to get into it as such, because they would have to try and star hop from one star to the other to try and find the target. Now that's taken away with the use of this kind of technology that can literally just at the press of a button go to exactly what you want to look at. Now, on a very clear night, it's thought that you can see around 2,000 stars alone with the naked eye. Well, I'm here at an observatory in Hampshire where they're monitoring weather data. And I hate to say it, but it's not looking too clear tonight. It's looking pretty overcast for Gemma's stargazing in Surrey. But let's see how she's been getting on. Well, now that it's much darker, it's time we had a chat with one of our stargazers. This is Dinesh over here. Hello. Hi. Not the ideal night for stargazing, really, is it? A little bit no. cloudy, but talk us through some of your tech anyway. Well, so over here we have a lightweight travel scope, uh, weighs about seven kilos, packs down very light, uh, can take it in hand luggage pretty much anywhere in the world. It's also very, very quick to set up. So you could leave it set up in your house, carry it into the garden as soon as you see a break in the cloud and be observing in about 30 seconds. And what about this behind you here? That's enormous. Yeah, so this is much more advanced. This is a motorised computer controlled scope. Mm -hmm. um, it's able to identify about 40,000 objects in the sky. What do you mean objects in the sky? Well, you've got lists here of stars, uh, planets, so you nebula. Could, you could type in a planet and it'll find it automatically? Yeah, we can do that for you now. Oh, okay, let's... Uh, Jupiter? Yep, there we go. So we'll put it onto Jupiter just there and hit enter and it will start moving. Hey. And it'll move over to... A How much here. is this? That, it must be pretty expensive. Uh, a setup like this is around £1,500 plus a few accessories, so it's a lot more affordable than the equipment was about 20 years ago. And do you think a lot of this kit is making it easier for amateur astronomers to perhaps make new discoveries? Yes, I mean, the biggest problem we have in the UK obviously is the weather. The cloud cover uh, makes it impossible like to, star mm. to st stargaze, exactly. So the advantages we have here are uh, things such as this digital camera which is attached to the scope and it will run an alignment for the computer um, in about two minutes and it does that by taking images of the sky um, and locating a hundred stars and once it's done that it'll use algorithms to work out exactly where we are where everything in the universe is and then it can point to uh, the objects using the handset here. Fantastic and how often do you do this? Every time it's clear. So not that often? Yeah not that often. <laughs> All right. Thanks for talking to us. No problem. I reckon I could get into this stargazing. Now here's a roundup of some of this week's other tech news.
Geckos have been inspiring new NASA technology that makes things stick to one another in space. Just as the lizard's foot has tiny adhesive hairs, the devices developed have small structures that work in a similar way. The latest generation of grippers can support more than 150 newtons of force. That's the equivalent of 35 pounds or 16 kilos. NASA says it's useful for lots of different applications in space. A humanoid robot was set free for a walk in the woods this week. Atlas, made by the Google-owned Boston Dynamics, is six foot two and weighs 330 pounds. The company has shown off other models tackling similar outside courses in the past, but they had more legs to help them stay upright. It says this one could soon be as agile as a human. And here's something you might take with you when you're next walking through the woods. A set of bone conduction headphones launched on Indiegogo this week. If you're unfamiliar with the tech, it works by sending audio as vibrations through your cheekbone to your inner ear, bypassing your eardrum. The company claims users benefit by being able to hear ambient sound for situational awareness and safety. Now it's time for some more space exploration. Here's Gav with our games review. So EVE Online is the massive online space game. You've probably heard about it in the news whenever there's like a giant battle. It pretty much makes like the mainstream news because it's one of those ones where, you know, thousands of people going up against each other using their spaceships that they've, you know, really worked hard to sort of build up. And if they get destroyed, that's it. They're gone forever. So people lose real life money in the game sort of thing so it's a really intense game and it demands quite a lot of you as well like some people say that you know eve is another job that they do they come home from one job and they go to another job which is like playing eve but if you put enough work into it you can actually earn real life money out of it like there's a couple of people who are doing really really well out of it and have made careers for themselves so if you fancy yourself as a real life space pilot probably check out eve online FTL is one of my favorite games to play on an iPad and I've lost just countless hours doing it because basically it's a really really simple thing like simple enough that it can be played on an iPad you're in charge of an entire ship but you're in charge of everything from like you know life support and people down to you know the actual hyperdrive and things like that and it's just constant challenges you're on the run from these sort of like rebels and you're, you just have to face every single second is always something going wrong so you're basically the captain and you're like okay and now everything's going right and then something else will go wrong and you have to deal with that and you have to make pretty it looks really nice and it's really cartoony and the soundtrack is fantastic but you have to make pretty big decisions that affect like people's lives so you know if you're into stuff like the sims you should probably give this a go because it's quite hard but people who are into sort of like management uh, simulators and things like that will really find something good in ftl i think I think Elite Dangerous for me is one of the only games out there where I play it and I actually feel like this is probably what it's like to pilot a space ship of some kind. You're in control of like ships that you acquire throughout the game and it's pretty hard, like, it's hard going. It's one of those games that's really relentless in the fact that it asks quite a lot of you to be able to you know, get the full experience out of it. And quite a lot of its features are not available to you from the start. You have to really earn it. So when you get a cool ship or you get you know, to a, a really good quadrant of space, you really feel like you've earned it because you've put the work in for it. And it's actually got one of the best Oculus Rift support things ever. Like if you can find the Oculus Rift version of it somewhere when someone you know has an Oculus Rift, I would really suggest seeking that out because I guess that's probably as close as you come to actually being in space, though I've never actually been in space. Yet. The thing that I love about Galaxy is you look at it first and it just looks like sort of like a run of the mill shooter. It's got these really annoying sort of like cartoon characters. Um, but the more work you put into it, it's actually a really, really deep sort of shooting experience. Anyone who's a fan of like anime cartoons from the 80s will really love this because it's kind of like ape in that kind of style. And it's one of those games as well, the mechanics of it are actually really, really deep, even though it looks like you're going around just like, you know, shooting things. You actually have to put a lot of work into doing, you know, really, really cool little moves. And if you can pull off those moves, then, you know, your score increases and you get bigger ships and things like that. And the story is actually pretty good. If you can get past the really horrible sort of like 80s cartoon dialogue, it's really, really good. Well, that's it for this week. I think I'm going to stay out here for a bit longer. Don't forget to look at Sky News on mobile and iPad for some bonus features from this week's episode, including an interview with an asteroid miner. 
I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.